The very first project I made for this YouTube channel was this tabletop cabinet. It's been gone for a while, but it recently came back to my shop because it lived for several years over a fireplace where the constant temperature changes has caused a lot of damage. What I like about this cabinet is that the real surprise is found inside. We have a bank of dovetail drawers that are spectacularly figured on the front panels. These are spalted maple, which I think is one of the most beautiful woods around. What is spalted maple? Where can you find it? And what do you need to know before you use it in your next project? Spalted maple is just regular maple that's been infiltrated by fungus. Basically, it's partially rotten. This can occur in the tree while it's still standing. It can occur in the log after it's been cut and laying on the ground for a while. It can even occur in boards after they've been milled if they're stored improperly. If the wood is kept in a damp place that's conducive to mold, spalting can occur in almost any species. But it's most common in maple, as well as poplar, cherry, and even walnut sometimes. Here you can actually see some fungus on the outside of a log. It infiltrates between the fibers and it creates random patterns of inky black lines. Spalting isn't caused by just one type of fungus, but different fungi can attack a single log, each producing a different effect that can create a mix of colors and patterns. While this is a natural process, it can be encouraged and even expedited by putting wood in a really damp place, maybe even covering it with a tarp. Some folks even have recipes that include beer and chemicals to encourage fungal growth. It can take a couple years to achieve a level of spalting like this, and it's easy to go too far. Spalted maple is partially rotten. Some of the areas around the black lines are spongy and punky. This can cause issues with joinery such as dovetails, like the ones that I cut for these drawers. I had trouble with the fibers crumbling as I cut. Of course, that can be remedied by fortifying those punky fibers with glue or other hardeners. Besides for issues with stability, there are other things to watch out for when you're working with spalted wood. For example, you may have a beautifully spalted board and you decide you want to slice it into thinner pieces for veneers. But the same process that makes these random patterns on the surface also causes that pattern to change as you cut deeper into the wood. These three panels are slices from the same piece of wood, but the pattern is dramatically different. As you cut deeper, that pattern changes. It can even diminish as you slice. So that makes it difficult to cut and then book match panels with spalted wood as you may with other types of figured material. Spalting can also cause issues when you sand. The dust that comes from these black lines can then become embedded into the fibers where the wood is softer or more spongy, which creates a gray appearance. Some people soak those problem areas with CA glue before they sand to harden them and keep that black out. Because spalted maple isn't cared for and dried under ideal circumstances, the quality of the boards can be questionable as well, including more cracks and checks and a higher amount of waste areas. If you're buying a slab or a board for maybe a bench or a tabletop, and the project is going to demand the entire piece, you'd better examine it closely to be sure the entire thing is usable. Spalted wood can also be difficult to find, despite the fact that it's not particularly rare. The fact is, many lumber yards discard it because of its unpredictable and inconsistent properties. But specialty woodworking suppliers sometimes offer it, and small independent sawyers can keep an eye out for it if you tell them you're interested in spalted wood. Small pieces can also be purchased online if you wish to make smaller projects like boxes. And as I said, you can make it yourself. Maybe we'll make a video about that someday. See you next time. We couldn't do what we do without folks like the Bushy family over at Clearview Cyclones. Not only do they make the best dust collection cyclones on the market, but they're woodworkers supporting woodworkers. They're the sponsor of this video and I really hope you'll thank them by visiting their website and using our discount code below this video. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.